I'm Denise, and I'm going to do a quick overview of the learning modules for lesson six. That's the second week of October. I'm going to the learning modules, and I will start with pre-K. As with all pre-K lessons, we start with time for music. At this point in the year, I am tapping the beats on a beat strip at the end of each verse. Warm up with the slide whistle. The kids do this with their hands. The slide whistle goes, whoo, and the kids go, whoo, in response. Um, they love that. Move to the beat. Lots of beat keeping at this level. Hey, everybody, shake, shake, shake. Another beat keeping activity. Slowly, quickly, the snail creeps up very slowly at the top of the head. Quickly, 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 runs a little mouse. Quickly, 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 in his little house. It's a baby game. I love to play with the babies, but you know what? Our pre-Ks love this too, and they just do it on themselves, or they could do it on a partner. Eensy weensy spider. There's high, middle, low in this spider, and the big spider has a low voice that relates to the tuba, which is a big instrument and has a low voice. And here's movements if you need ideas for movements. We have Dana Hero, our wonderful music play teacher from Ohio, introducing the letter D and teaching the dance doggy song. And here is letter D says D. And here's a worksheet. If you choose to do that with your students, alternately send it to the classroom teacher to do in class or send it home with the students to do at home. And then dance, 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 doggy dance is always lots of fun. Here's the kids doing the movements with me. It's interesting seeing these. This little guy graduated and is on scholarship at the Alberta Arts College right now. Um, which sounds are fast, which sounds are slow. And reviewing open shut them again a favorite song and really good for practicing those comparables letter t is a review because it's canadian thanksgiving this week and so the turkey tango relates to canadian thanksgiving we'll bring that back in november for our american friends i love falling leaves with the scarves it's a beautiful song and then we end with skin and Marie. that's our pre-k lesson for week uh Two of October, this is lesson six. Kindergarten, lesson six for October week two. We start with our welcome song and then we do, hey, hey, look at me. We do need to redo this video because we don't need to wear masks this year, which is wonderful, but we will get that redone. And we give you the accompaniment track here. So you can make up your own movements with your class. Jot the ideas from your class on the board and then sing them all. The Autumn Leaf Song with Kindergarten is also lovely with scarves or simply with hand movement and play it and sing along. I do this for the body scale. My body scale starts on the floor with Do, Ray is my ankles, Me is my knees, Fa my thighs, So my tummy, La is my shoulders, T is my head and do I reach up. That's the body scale I use and it's reflected in this video. Here's a word rhythms coloring page. So they choose their colors. They color the leaves, whatever color they wish. So if they went yellow, yellow, red, red, that would be their rhythm. Yellow, yellow, red, red. Choose an instrument to play it on. Yellow. Or two different instruments if you have two kids working on this together. So you can use the autumn leaves as your theme and this as a word rhythm composition B section or you can simply go around the room and hear everybody's composition. I play the class echoes. Yellow, yellow, red, red. Class plays what I just played. So they're engaged all the way through. Crisscross applesauce. This is another one I do on my grandkids until they are in probably grade two or three. And they love it. Crisscross applesauce. Spiders crawling up your back. And I crawl right up to the tops of their heads. Cool breeze. Blow on their neck. Tight squeeze. Now you've got the shiveries. And that's where you tickle. And if you're doing this in class, tickle gently on the sides. Don't go anywhere inappropriate. So I show how I do it on a student and then they turn and they each do it on their friends. 
Uh, this is moved to air by Bach, and I had two stuffies that pretended that they were skating. I will have to end up doing a plate movement for this because it's quite lovely, but no time to redo that before I'm making this uh, overview video. You can make up your own movements. We've given you the piece of music so that your kids could create their own movements with hands or with plates or with scarves. And here is Bedinnery by Johann Sebastian Bach. This is a good example of fast. And here I've done lots of circles with plates. Again, don't want to give out plates. Just have kids do it with their hands. It's just as effective. Uh, more fun for them to use plates, I think. And here's the track only. Here's the shape song. I drew these shapes on paper plates and then we gave them to our helpers. We'll have to do this again with kids now that we have no masks and we're allowed back into schools, but that's the shape song and we end with skin and rink. So that's kindergarten lesson six. Going on to grade one, lesson six. And grade ones have a nice full lesson. I can see that. Welcome to music, our starter. This is warm ups with the slide whistle. I've been doing this the last two weeks with a K1 class um, that I'm teaching now till Christmas. And they really do love the slide whistle as a warm up. Play it, they echo and they show with their hands how the slide whistle goes. Find a ribbon or a scarf and you move to the music. Here's that song 10 in the bed. They've done that already. I've seen some posts on Music Play Teachers Group on Facebook of how teachers are doing it. Some really creative ideas. I still think the most fun for the kids is to have 10 of them and then they roll out of the bed one at a time. More fun than stuffies. And you can now create accompaniments for 10 in the bed. So choose instruments. There were 10 in the bed and the little one said... So choose instruments for different parts of the song. Grandma's glasses. These are grandma's glasses. This is grandma's hat. This is the way she folds her hands and puts them in her lap. High voice. These are grandpa's glasses. This is grandpa's hat. This is the way he folds his arms and then he takes a nap. <sighs> Practicing high and low. It takes so long for some kids to acquire that ability to understand what's high sounds, what's low sounds. They get fast slow really quickly. They get loud quiet really quickly. High and low harder. So we're reviewing aviary. We're reviewing the elephant. Here's a worksheet on high or low. The little instrument is high. The big instrument is low. Here's the high low game. And one of the So Me storybooks. I really like this one. It's got a little song in it. Mrs. Ross and I'm the boss who made up this game. And so it's teaching Soulfish in a very tricky way. The character in the story, the little guy that's here in the, the storybook, his name is So Me. So wherever he appears in the song, we sing his name. And then the music time is over. That's grade one, lesson six. Going on to grade two. Grade two, lesson six, week two of October. I love the song Tony Chestnut and kids love it as well. And we do it specifically to teach tempos. Largo, moderato, presto. And here's Falling Leaves song and uh, this is a beautiful little song in grade two, and I use it for teaching half notes. It's an excellent half note piece. So they can move to it with scarves. This is actually a nice kids demo video because it shows it played on ORF instruments with a group of kids moving. And then is it one sound or two? Yellow, two sounds. Red and brown is one sound that's held for two beats. Done first time with icons. And there's the answers. And we learn about half notes. How many sounds did you hear on the first beat? Two sounds. Titi or dude, if that's the words you use. One sound, ta. A sound that's held for two beats, two, half note. And here is using notes to name the notes instead. And here's the answers for that. Uh, color the instruments. These are instruments that are going to be used in the next song. And 
it's I am a fine musician. And so each of the instruments that's here is featured in this song. Pumpkin Fat. This is actually a review song of a kindergarten song, but don't tell your grade twos that. Uh, they, they love the game. It's fun. Um, this is Janae's class playing the game. This is an older group than kindergarten by far, but they show how to play the game. The one in the middle chooses the scariest face to be the next one in the middle. And we have this wonderful interactive prepare to teach so and me. Hopefully this is review for your grade twos. If it's not, then this is a great opportunity for them to practice so and me. I'm going to have to move this. Um, I want to play this first one and I can't get rid of me. There. Ready, go. Pumpkin, pumpkin, round and fat. Turn into a jack-o'-lantern just like that. So that's what I want the children to do. I want them to show with their arms along with the animation, not just watch. Now it shows Ready, them a lot of go. contour. Trace pumpkin, the pumpkin. And again, I would hope this is review, but it might not be. Here's where they name the notes. They figure out pumpkin, pumpkin. Notice these are boom whacker colors. So that if you have boom whackers, you can play this on boom whackers as well. And then a little assessment. Which one do they think it is? They can play on here if they wish and do it here. Um, I have a cookie sheet staff that's really cute for having kids notate answers. Oh, great, actually. This is my cookie sheet. So instead of telling me the answers, I could tell them to use lines one and two and put the answers on their board. And then we would check them there. This cookie sheet staff is a wonderful little manipulative. Music time is over. That's our grade two lesson. There is no, um, there's no crime or no shame in going back to lessons from kindergarten and grade one when they're in grade two. If it's something, if your kids are a very transient population and they've missed something basic like so and me, you have to reteach. So reteach. I'm looking at grade three, lesson six for October week two. And we start with a poison melody to practice do mi so or so mi do, whichever way you want to say it. We're naming our naming convention on music play online. We're starting with the lowest note when we name. So we'll be changing these covers to reflect that do mi so. But kids love poison melody. Here is the note highlights for the pass a bean bag game. It's a great way to teach a song by rote. You play two measures, have the kids sing back play a measure, kids sing back, and then it does it in solfa. If solfa is not your strength area, great way to learn it for yourself. Here's how we actually play the game. And then we practice naming solfa notes. Shake the Papaya was introduced uh, last week and it's a review, but you choose instruments and you improvise in the BCD sections. Now we have another instrument activity. This is instruments with Viennese musical clock. It's suggested to use sticks, triangle, drum, maracas, but if you don't have those, substitute for what you do have. And the sticks will play with the A section, triangles with the B, hand drums with the C, and maracas with the D. And then we do the passing game. And the cup game is clap, clap, tee, tee, ta, clap, pick up and pass. If your kids aren't ready to pass, do it like we did in COVID, where they just hold on to it and they don't pass it. And then when they're ready, you can pass it out. My trick for getting kids to always pass in the correct direction is to start with the pile of cups in front of me and I give them out one at a time. So I give out one, then me and the person next to me pass it on. Then three of us pass it on. Four of us pass it on. They're forced into going in the correct direction. This is actually a grade two, three class or choir. It was my choir at the time and they played it for me. We've got match the melody with do, re, mi patterns. And again, I suggest using the cookie sheet to notate the patterns. I have do, I have re, 
I have me. So if you're playing the game, you pull up the game and the kids choose from whatever level they want. I want me re do patterns. So if I take it here and I listen to do, re, me, re. instead of saying which pattern I want, I show it. Do, re, me, and I need another magnet for re, and I got it right. This is way more valuable for kids than simply holding up fingers, much more engaging. Um, going back to our grade three, there's our cookie sheet staff tool. Um, the song Seven Up also uses Do, Re, and Me. And here's how the kids play it. I didn't have a large class, so I only had four guessers. Big class, you choose seven, they touch the thumbs, and the ones who have their thumbs touched try and guess who it was that touched them. If they're correct, they switch places. Not correct, the um, the toucher gets to go again. So fun lesson for third grade. This is lesson six for October week two. Continuing with the overview of lesson six for October week two, this is grade four. So grade four starts with melody playback, so la ti do, and then they go on to Miss Mary Mac, which uses so la ti do in the key of D. And this is here for the teacher if you want to read it from this, but the notation is fairly complex for this one. So you may want to just teach this song by rote and then teach them about so la ti do after. And this is how the kids play Miss Mary Mac and uh, when I teach a clap game, I teach with myself as the partner, the kids all copy me, and then I partner them up and they play with somebody else. So it's miss, cross your arms, mare, pat your legs, e, mac, clap right, left, both, all dressed in black, 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 and it goes on. That clap pattern is complex to begin with, but it's simple once you have it. Here is the soulful challenge for Miss Mary Mack. And then we're going to have um, a play along with Checky Morena. Choose from the instruments that you have in your classroom, and you can play with the B, C, and the D sections. You can have them improvise. Here's the note highlights for Checky Morena. And here's the song. It's a fun song. It's sung by a, a lady actually from Guatemala was my singer for that. And here's name the solfa notes for Checky Marina. Name the pitch letter names. And then we have a cup game with stars and stripes forever. This is uh, a bit of a challenging one, but we teach it slowly. So it should be fairly easy to get. And then we demonstrate it with um, our staff. So here is the cup game with stars and stripes forever. And we end with canoe song by Margaret Embers McGee. And that will be partnered with This Is My Home as two wilderness partner songs. So that's grade four for lesson six, second week, October. Looking at grade five, here's lesson six. And this is all about tempo. Um, the game song, Ronald McDonald, it's a fun little game song that I've done with kids and I do it to review tempo terms. And the kids demo is Ronald McDonald, a biscuit. And we do that and there's some other motions to it as well. And then it speeds up double time. So it's a real challenge for the kids. Then we take them to the tempo interactive tool. You can also access via the toolbox if you wish, but I love this tempo tool. So if you want to have your kids learning more rhythms, let's go to level five. To review what these tempo terms mean, you can take them to the teaching slides. Largo means to play or sing very slowly and click to close. You know, we think we're teaching these things, but I had my children's choir yesterday and asked them what was a tempo that was faster than Largo and one of them said piano. So they don't necessarily know the tempo terms as well as we think, but you can do the tempo terms with them, review it in a fun way. Let's try this at Allegro. and go press.
Festa. I really like that tempo tool. More body percussion. So going on to lesson eight with Christian, reviewing seven, reviewing six, and then inviting the students to make up 16 beats of body percussion. So my suggestion is to notate a stomp with an S, a pat with a P, chest with CH, clap, clap, butterfly. You could do a BFL or something to notate quickly what you do. And then they figure out 16 beats of body percussion and we've given them a fun track to do their body percussion with after they've made it up. Um, I think you can slow this down and that would make it easier to start. So you can change the speed of that. So that's grade five, lesson six, October week two, middle school. And oops, I would think I went to the wrong lesson. Middle school, Lesson six is going to have a focus on triplets. And so you're going to play the which rhythm do we hear the triplets level, which is, I guess it's level 12. And often with this, get the kids a piece of paper and a pencil, have them number from one to 10, have them write their answers down as you're going. That way they get practice notating by hand, which is a good skill to have. The song Fish and Chips is the best triplet song ever, and it's a fun three-part song if the kids are good singers and confident singers. Um, they could also learn to play the ukulele arrangement <clears throat> of this if you have classroom ukuleles, because it is only a two-chord song, not terribly, terribly difficult. So if you want to extend that and have kids play ukulele with it, you certainly could. Here's the rhythm composition. If you're working on triplets, have them select the triplet level. It's level nine. This takes you directly to level nine. We've got a second game song for middle school this week, and this is the dollar game where you pass... Um, I take the dollar and I place it into one child's hands and then pretend to place it in all the others. So it's tricky, it's engaging for kids, and this is a simple reading song. So there's note highlights, there's solfa, note name challenge, and then the same review of body percussion and going on to lesson eight for the middle school kids. Christian is very good. I like his lessons a lot and middle school can do the same composition and use the same track to perform with as the fifth graders. So that is lesson six for October week two.